Hello and welcome back. The topic of this video, we are going to go over um, bacterial nomenclature or bacterial naming. All right. So with bacteria, bacteria have a genus. Let me capitalize that and there's going to be a reason for that. And a species name, okay? So the genus is a little more broad in categorizing the bacteria. The species is a bit more specific, okay? So an example of a bacterial genus is going to be Staphylococcus, okay? And I made a say about making this one capital. I've got the G capital here. Genus names are always capitalized, okay? So I have a capital S on Staphylococcus, all right? Species, I have a lowercase s here. That's a little harder to see, okay? Um, It, but the gene or the species name is always going to be lowercase. Okay. The other thing that's important to do when you are expressing the name of an organism as its genus and species is it either needs to be italicized or underlined. So because I can't really write in italics, I can write in cursive, but cursive isn't the same thing as italics. Since I can't write in italics, I'm going to underline all of the bacterial names that I'll discuss during the semester, okay? And that's the way we would properly present a bacterial name. We um, give the genus name first, in this case Staphylococcus, species second, uh, and that would be aureus. And what Staph aureus, just as a little background, Staphylococcus aureus is the bacteria associated with what you may have heard of as MRSA, okay? So MRSA is an acronym, it's a shortening and what it is, is it's methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. That's the bad bug that circulates in and around hospitals now, okay? But to properly present the name, we go genus and species, okay? To give another example, we could do Streptococcus pyogenes. And that Streptococcus pyogenes is going to be a different bacteria than Staphylococcus aureus. We know that via the name, okay? It's in a different category. It's a different genus. It's a different species. That Streptococcus pyogenes is the bacteria that's responsible for strep throat, okay? So if you notice, both of these genus names end in caucus. So a little bit of naming of bacteria can be based on the shape of the bacteria, okay? So for a bacteria to be caucus, the bacteria when visualized underneath a microscope will look round. So if you see caucus in the name of the bacteria, what it tells you is that it's a round looking bacteria underneath the microscope, okay? So both Streptococcus pyogenes and Staphylococcus aureus 
are round bacteria, okay? The other shapes we could have, we could have a rod-shaped, and that is called bacillus, all right? And there are bacteria that in its name, they'll be, um, for example, bacillus subtilis would be a bacteria that is rod-shaped. So sometimes the name of the bacteria can tell you a little bit about the shape, okay? You also, for shape of bacteria, have some bacteria that adopt a spiral conformation. Um, and those are gonna be known as spirillium or a spirochete. And we'll talk a little bit later about what the difference is between the two, don't worry about that. But if you see spear in it, spiri or spiro, it tells you that essentially what it's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of wavy, it's gonna be um, kind of twisted as far as its overall shape, okay? So another bit about naming here, and I'm gonna use the Staphylococcus and the Streptococcus as the example okay, um, gets to um, the name based on arrangement. So the two arrangements I'm going to cover here, you can have bacteria that are kind of clustered together like a group of grapes. That's going to be the staphylo arrangement. You can also have bacteria that are linked together as chains. And that's going to be the strepto arrangement. Okay? So based on Streptococcus pyogenes, we know just based on the name that this is going to be a bacteria that's going to be circular in shape, and it's going to form chains of bacteria. Staphylococcus aureus, again, round bacteria, but instead of forming chains, these are going to be clustered, okay? And you can transfer that to bacillus as well. You can have streptobacillus, and that tells you something about the shape and arrangement of the bacteria. There aren't staphylobacilli. Um, bacilli will either arrange themselves as strepto in chains or there'll be individuals, okay? Spiral bacteria always associated as individuals. Round bacteria can also be um, observed underneath the microscope as an individual, okay? But this just kind of goes over a little bit of the naming of bacteria, how we present proper bacterial names. So when I ask you for a proper bacterial name, I'm looking for what I've got right here. Staphylococcus aureus, and the first letter of the genus is capitalized. The first letter of the species is lowercase, and it's either underlined or in italics, okay? That's what proper bacterial nomenclature means, okay? From the bacterial name, we can also gain a little bit of information about shape and sometimes also arrangement, all right? So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please let me know.